RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 graphics cards will continue to receive driver updates for critical security fixes and bug corrections. To focus on optimizing and delivering new and improved technologies for the latest GPUs, AMD Software Adrenaline Edition 25.10.2 places the Radeon RX 5000 and 6000 series graphics cards RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 into maintenance mode. Future driver updates with specific game optimizations will focus on RDNA 3 and RDNA 4 GPUs, AMD to PC games hardware. And let me just start this video by saying that AMD messed up. And they messed up by putting RDNA 2 cards on the legacy maintenance or maintenance legacy patch, whatever you want to call it. They messed up. But to be honest, for the desktop, and I repeat, the desktop AMD RDNA 2 GPUs, I believe it matters much less than you think. And again, no, I am not defending AMD by any means. I'm just putting some facts in the mix. But I'll proceed to the explaining. I released my Adrenaline 25.10.2 drivers review video yesterday kept editing another video I was doing, answered some comments and went to sleep. As I wake up today, I see lots of comments of people saying that they won't buy AMD anymore and that they're blocking my channel because I am a chill and never go against AMD and so on. And I'm like, what? what? I literally have lots of videos calling AMD out, for example, in issues with previous CPUs failing out, in issues with chipset drivers making things not working correctly, in things like when AFMF2 was not a thing for, uh, for RDNA2 cards, I have lots of things, and even on my GPU comparison videos, if you go to my GPU comparison videos, I have some of them actually advising NVIDIA cards, because I do advise NVIDIA cards over the MD ones, when they're actually better. The 5060 Ti is from 10 to 14% faster. In some scenarios like ray tracing and productivity wise, it is considerably faster than the 96 XT. In some scenarios, not all, of course not all, but at the same time, it costs about $70 more. So it kind of depends on what you want. If you don't really care about the pricing or, or at least a small difference of $50, $70, then you go with the 5060 Ti. You still have the best upscaler, the LSS4 Transformer is still the best upscaler even though FSR4 is very close. The LSS and I do understand your frustration, I do, believe me, but I mean, I don't really work at AMD. I don't make any decisions there, I don't work there, so I don't really get the point of these comments. But maybe the people calling me AMD Chill are maybe the ones that called me NVIDIA Chill when I was when I made my first video on frame generation, actually saying that frame generation from NVIDIA actually impressed me, they called me NVIDIA Chill. Then I went and when frame generation from AMD came, I, w I actually bashed the frame generation because it was a mess, but as soon as they fixed it, I said it was actually impressive for a software-sided solution, People called me AMD Chill again. And when I go and make videos like the latest that I made about multi-frame generation, where I said that multi-frame generation was actually decent in the most recent games, they called me NVIDIA Chill again. So, I mean, it's like you can't really have opinions because you, if you have opinions, you actually are towards a brand or another. And that makes absolutely no sense. It's like people just have to have something to hate. Now, going back to the topic of AMD slashing support for RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 cards, again, I believe that AMD messed up. Well, I can see RDNA 1 getting to legacy because the cards were released in 2019, so six years ago, and on top of that, the, the fastest card of that generation, the RX 5700 XT, is basically on par with the RX 7600 XT, or sometimes even slower, which is the entry-level card of the previous generation. And on top of that, the only card that could support int 8 instructions is the RX 5500 XT. Not could support, it actually supports, because it was the last card to be released. All the others can't really use the other FSR4. So I can see why RDNA 1 would go into Legacy, but RDNA 2, I mean, the fastest card of RDNA 2 as of now, the RX 6950 XT, is usually on par or sometimes even faster than the RX 7800 XT, which is a mid-tier card from the previous generation, mid to high-tier card from the previous generation. So why did I say that for desktop users, desktop RDNA 2 users, this was kind of irrelevant? Because I have been testing these drivers, like AMD drivers, in many cards, RX 6000, 7000, and now 9000 series, for years, and I can tell you right away that for the past couple of years, the RX 6000 series have been having close to no performance uplifts whatsoever, even in newer games. 
meaning that AMD was already barely working on them. And when new games came out, I usually test the RX 6000 series, at least some of them. And yeah, the performance gains in the new games supported were basically zero, while the RX 7000 and 9000 series were getting performance boosts. So again, it means that AMD was barely working on them already. And the same happens for Nvidia cards. I am 99.9% .9 sure that if you go test an RTX 3060 from the same generation counterpart of the RX 6000 series, so they were basically released in the same year, I believe, 2020, if you go test an RTX 3060 or uh, an RTX 3080, if you go and test new drivers that support new games, if you go test the previous versus the current drivers, you'll most likely see no performance uplifts whatsoever, especially for the lower tier cards. Cards like the 3080, maybe, maybe the 3080 Ti might have some performance enhancements, but lower tier cards won't have performance enhancements at all. That's how they work. It is still in the same driver package, but doesn't really mean that you'll have performance updates and or newer features. And that's basically what happens on the AMD and the and the nvidia side okay so they just stop giving you optimizations because first you can't really optimize forever on a hardware perspective and software perspective and second because companies just want to move forward never backwards and one of the misconceptions here is that people seem to think that somehow because the drivers aren't supported anymore that you can't play the newer games which is obviously not real you can just install like right now a driver from one or two years ago or even three years ago and it will work in a matter of fact i tested before the 23.9.1 drivers which are the drivers that make the rdna2 cards work with fsr4 int 8 version and the 23.9.1 drivers actually work better in terms of frame stability with the new cyberpunk 2077 patch than the newer drivers so yeah, you can just play newer games, most of the newer games at least, with uh, older drivers without any kind of issues. So again, is this a right thing to do? Of course not. Because even though RDNA 2 was released in 2020, cards like the RX 6950 XT were released in 2022, which means that they had official support and optimizations only for three years, and that's definitely not acceptable. But again, AMD did state that they would still bring critical security fixes and bug corrections, meaning that the support isn't entirely dropped, they aren't just optimizing for newer games. And while it seems that I was, as I was actually making the recording of this video and the editing, it seems that AMD has made a new st statement, especially for you guys that are, well, that are worried about the, all the features that are, that may not come and so on. Maybe this might be damage control and it most likely is, but remember they made it maintenance mode, not legacy. But well, according to the article in Video Cards, AMD has another statement. After several clarifications, AMD now walked back its original statement and confirmed that the so-called maintenance mode does not mean RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 architectures will stop receiving game optimizations. And AMD states that new features, bug fixes and game optimizations will continue to be delivered as required by the market needs in the maintenance mode branch. AMD to Tom's hardware. So as you guys see, this is kind of damage control, but since it was on the maintenance mode before and not legacy per se, I believe that the original intent was this. But even if it wasn't, at least now it is. So even though I said that complaining usually doesn't work, it seems that this time it did, which is great. Still, again, um, yeah, it's maintenance smooth, and as the market requires, it means that basically if a game is really, really popular, they will optimize those cars for that game. Games that aren't really popular or don't, or don't really need precise updates, yeah, it won't be there for those. But again, at least for the popular ones, there will be drivers. Cheers. And I mean, these new 25.10.2 drivers are already branched out and AMD is still fixing issues for the older cards like the RX 6000 series. So I believe this was more like a bad marketing move than anything else. And to be honest, I believe that this will make them able to optimize things for the older and newer cards better because as usual, when they bring new features, they kind of break some older ones. They have different driver branches, so the newer features won't really affect the older cards, meaning that the older cards won't really have newer game optimizations, but they also won't have many issues on top of the ones that they have right now, because again, newer features aren't going there, they have different branches. So there are good things, there are bad things. Let's see what this gives, because it's, it's really kind of a messed up situation. 
Now regarding the comments that I made on my comment section, I thought people understood my point entirely, but it seems that wasn't the case. And again, I am not defending AMD and I have zero reasons to do it. Again, I don't work there, I don't own AMD, nothing like that, I have zero reasons to do that. But as I grew up, I understand more and more that it is great to have a passion for something, but when it comes to buying a product, you should always base yourself on what you can afford and what it is the best for you at that moment. I do understand that people are frustrated right now, but that frustration won't lead you anywhere. In like... 90% of times or even more than that, your frustration or your complaining won't do anything and companies will keep doing what they want to do. And at the end of the day, you're just annoyed because of something that doesn't really impact your life personally. It might work in some cases, like it worked with AMD when they didn't want to bring AFMF to the RX 6000 series, but the only thing that really works is when you vote with your money. Don't like the company's practices, don't buy their products. This applies for every company of every product. If you don't like their products anymore, if you think they're heading the, the wrong way, don't buy their products because that's the only way they will feel it in their wallets. Because I think some people still fail to understand that companies aren't your friends and they aren't your enemies either. I mean, you just buy the product that you want if you want to. Nobody is obligating you to buy anything. And if you bought a product and you are not satisfied anymore, next time don't buy that product. Buy from another brand, don't buy at all, just shift uh, entirely to consoles, whatever, do whatever you want, but you are the one that picks what you buy. So again, they will fill it in their wallet. Complain whatever you want, but if you go right after and buy another of their products, your complaining is worth zero because you're complaining, but after that you're doing exactly the same. That, that happens a lot with fanboys. They complain a lot, for example, of the new Apple or Apple phone, then they go and buy the next one. They complain a lot about the new Samsung phone, they go and buy the next one. They complain a lot about PS4, Xbox, whatever, when the new one comes out, they will buy the new one and so on. The same applies, for example, for NVIDIA cards. People complain a lot about NVIDIA cards, they are shading marketing, saying that the RTX 5070 is equal to the RTX 4090, so on, so on, so on, higher prices, uh, the RTX 4080, 12 gigabytes, and on the end of the day, people still go and buy it. So when you are complaining and right after that you're buying the same product that you were complaining about, you are kind of an idiot. You either just shut your mouth and just buy the product because that's your choice after all. Again, companies aren't our friends and aren't our enemies as well. They're just there doing business the same as we are. So you either shut up and buy the products and that's completely fine because you pick the, the products that you buy or you just complain and then you need to do something. You, not, you need to shift to another brand or just, I don't know, just don't buy it at all. That's your choice. But again, complaining won't really help in most cases. Now, I did say AMD messed up when putting RDNA 2 architecture to the maintenance mode and not because of the desktop GPUs, like I told you before, but because of the APUs and the integrated graphics. There are still lots of devices using RDNA 2 iGPUs, like the Steam Deck, which is quite popular. So unless AMD releases optimization solely for the APUs, which I highly doubt, it means you bought a recent $600 or more product to have no more game optimizations. This is all to say that AMD did mess up entirely, definitely, but you guys are also overreacting because again, most of you guys didn't know that you weren't getting performance updates already for the, for the past couple of years. You were having maybe for the top tier cards, some updates, some performance increases here and there, but mostly you weren't having any performance updates whatsoever. You were having only bug fixes and, and most likely security fixes which is what you will have now, according to AMD. I understand the frustration, but if you analyze things properly, yeah, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Again, more like a bad marketing move that, than anything else. Still dumb, still dumb as hell. Vote with your wallet and they will fill it. If maybe one people, if maybe one people don't buy an, uh, a GPU from them, they won't fill it. If 10 people won't buy, they won't. If 1,000 people don't buy, maybe. If 10,000 people or 100,000 people don't buy their GPUs, they will start feeling it and they will know that they need to change their focus. So that's how you make things change, I believe. Again, analyze things properly. Don't get emotional because 
Getting emotional when buying a product is not a good thing, it's actually a bad one. And analyzing things is the best thing that you can do when getting a product. I'm being redundant, redundant now. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and hope you understood what I meant. Thank you again and see you in the next one, by the way. And if, again, if, you're, if you didn't understand my point or if you think I'm, I'm wrong somehow, just leave a comment in the comment section and let me know because, again, I really want to know. And no, I am not defending AMD one more time. It is what it is. I, I am defending who I believe is worth defending and I bash on who I believe is worth bashing. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh,